enjoyed the outdoor time, though. I did. Uh, I felt like my daddy every Sunday. <laughs> Remember, I made fun of him out doing the street preaching. And then there I was on the street. But I thank God for that time. That was just a, I think it was a time we needed as a fellowship. Amen. And uh, it was just, you know, in being in compliance. We're just trying to obey. But at the same time, ain't nothing stopping the fellowship. Amen. Amen. Because at that point, we're disobeying scripture. We ain't going to disobey scripture. Amen. So, amen. Y'all going to have to try to make a way. You're going to have to do something. But we're going to keep fellowshipping. Because we believe what the Bible said. It says that as that day approaches, fellowship becomes even more vital. Amen. And how many of you believe that day is approaching? Oh, my goodness gracious. I mean, you turn on the news and they've got, I mean, and it was a part of the plan. It's, it's so planned. I've been telling y'all, how long have I been talking about a race war? See, ABC folk aren't caught. Y'all wasn't caught off guard by nothing, right? You looked at it and said, oh, yeah, yeah, we knew that was going to happen. Amen. The pandemic didn't cause enough pandemonium. So, I don't know who got paid. I don't know who got, I don't know. But I do know that that video that I watched was planned. Oh, I'll preach. Hey, we back in the building now. Oh, I'm on the radio, though. Oh, well. <laughs> Stuff like that don't happen accidentally. They choose which networks to run it on. Because there are some pastors in Chicago that were trying to contact the national media to let them know 49 people got shot over Memorial Day weekend. 10 of them died, and one of them was a five-year-old girl shot. 49 people shot the bloodiest Memorial Day weekend since 2015. I mean, seriously, though, what is it? If, it, if it's, I mean, if we just talking, I mean, why you don't want to show that? They know what they want to show. It was planned. How do people travel thousands of miles to a city and there are already bricks provided, stacked and ready for you to throw? Uh, that's why you can't believe everything you see on TV and you definitely can't let your emotions cause you to make a decision that you're going to regret later. You can't believe everything you see on social media and then make a decision based on virtual reality? We're going to be, look at somebody and say, I'm going to be smarter than that. I'm going to, look at somebody and say this. This is the good one. I've come too far to wild out now. Too far. You come too far to wild out now? Are you kidding me? It's the end of the world. Why would I wild out at the end of the world and doubt everything that I've been taught all the way up to now? My whole life was a lie. Yeah, that'll make me go grab a brick and chunk it at myself. That's not a demon in hell about to make me doubt what God has done and I have proof of. I have proof that God is speaking. I have proof that God has foretold and foresaw the end time. I have proof. Oh, I wish we all could go, but we can't. Amen. Amen. Well, and y'all know it has nothing to do with the messenger or the message. It has everything to do with the heart. 
Judah sat right there with the greatest teacher of all times, the greatest pastor ever could be. And it didn't work on him. Was he not at the table with Jesus? Did he not see all the miracles? Did he not even see the financial blessings that they all partook of because of Jesus? Just grab a fish and there's money. And it still didn't work. Because something was wrong with his heart. When something's wrong with your heart, the word's not going to work. Look at somebody say, the word won't work on you. Hey, I y'all, come, come on. It ain't about to be like that. I mean, we are trying to usher in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you believe he's coming back? How many of you believe he's coming back for you? I don't want him trying to look for me. He ain't stopping by the club, like the old folks used to say. He's making one stop. And I need to go back with him. Amen? Amen. All right, let's preach this, preach this word, and we just going to move on. And, you know, I was praying about the situation that's going on in the nation and the tempers flaring and the people, you know, because it's so easy. You lock people in their homes. You forced them onto the internet. So you forced a larger impression upon them. Where they are more impressionable now. Because you've taken reality away and you got everybody in virtual reality. So now all you have to do is use some triggers in virtual reality and you'll spark a reality uprising. Or a real uprising. Based on something virtual. Okay? Now, understand something. It's okay to be upset at what you saw, because what you saw is upsetting. Because most people, especially African Americans, see that as somebody they knew or somebody in their family. That's the way we think as, as a people. And our, you know, our oppression, slave, all those things did that to us. So when we see something, especially when it's at the hands of another race, we, we take that personally. That could be my cousin, that's my son, in most cases, one of my sons or something, especially if they've already had previous issues with the law or whatever. So you see that. So I get that first reaction. There you go. I get that first reaction. But what makes us as Christians different from non-Christians is after we're angry, we have to let the fruits of the Spirit take over. The fruit are going to, here's what the fruit does. The first thing the fruit is going to do is remind us of who we used to be. Once we're reminded of who we used to be, what was done doesn't look as bad. Look, and I know somebody, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. If you look at the way you used to be, and it took the grace and mercy of God to save you, then you look at what others do have done, it doesn't look as bad. Unless you have a self-righteous demon in you. But for most of us in here that saved, <laughs> hey, <laughs> that could have been me. And I'm not talking about the dude that got killed. I'm talking about the dude that did the killing. Because I've killed with my mouth. I've killed with my tongue. I've killed with my actions. And according to Christ, Beatitudes, I'm just as guilty. So I need to pray for him like Jesus prayed for those that were killed. And Jesus wasn't watching them kill somebody else. They were killing him. And he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. What is, wait, listen. What is know not what they do? Because look, well, yeah, they do know what they do. No, they don't know what they're doing because it's not them doing it. It's an evil spirit doing it through them. Okay? So I'm going to pray for that person. Jesus is saying, I'm going to be gone, but hopefully that person I prayed for will separate themselves from that evil spirit so they won't have that evil action. Okay? Still hurts. Still going to bother you. If you keep watching it, you need to stop watching it. You need to stop watching video footage anyway because you really don't know. 
You don't know. Well, I saw it. Well, you don't know. You just don't know. So you don't want to flip your whole world upside down over something that you just don't know. You give that to God and allow the fruits of the... Listen, I'm only talking to save people. I, I don't have... I'm not Killer Mike. So I don't have a way to make unsaved people feel better about a situation. All I know is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's all I have to offer you. Because that's what saved me. So when I'm looking at a situation, when you're looking at a situation, as a believer, you have to let the fruits of the Spirit be instituted. The love, joy, peace. Long-suffering means let's just wait. Before I react, let's wait. Let me turn everything off. Let me make me fast. Let me pray. Give me a few days. Gentleness, goodness, faith, that's important. Because faith says, no matter what I saw, in the end, we win. That's faith. Meekness and then self-control, temperance. Let me, let, let me not say anything out of emotion. Let me not do anything out of emotions. Amen? amen. Can y'all receive that? Amen. Okay, so amen. We have to still be saved. And it's hard. It's, it, it's, it's, it, it makes you angry. But you got to stay. Look at somebody say, stay saved. Stay saved. Stay saved. Stay saved. And if you stay saved, guess what's going to happen? We're going to get past it. Everything's a sense. What? Yeah. Jesus said, after, I mean, the Bible said, after you have suffered for a while. Then, I mean, it, it only, look at somebody say, it only lasts for a while. Trouble don't last always. And even in the midst of the trouble, God is going to bless his people. He has not forgotten you. He hasn't forgotten you. That's what I'm talking about today. Man, I went all off. But y'all just so happy to be in here. Ain't nobody ready to go. I know I'm happy. So, I was, you know, really praying. Lord, you know, I, what do I say? How do I handle this? What do you want me to talk about? And God began to just show me, you know, the... The scripture, uh, fathers, provoke not your children to anger or wrath, lest they be discouraged. And God began to show me people get discouraged when they're provoked to wrath. Basically, when they didn't grow up being taught love from an authority, a male authority, then situations like this cause them to react and act out. And people don't understand love like they should. The Bible said love can cover a multitude of faults. Amen? Love suffereth long. It beareth all. Believeth all. And this is the most important one. This is the opposite of discouragement. Hope. Hope is the opposite of discouragement. So it says it beareth all, it believeth all, and love what? Hopeth all. So people need hope. So I was like, well, Lord, okay, what hope do they need? And he just, God just... He spoke these three words. God loves you. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash God loves you dot PDF. Yeah. And, you know, I did the video. Why am I here? Somebody watched it. <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> that video. And in that video, it, I, I kind of dealt with some of this, but God just kind of showed me some different things about this. He wants me to tell you this is the answer. For, for this generation, they have to know that God loves them. They have to know. They mistake this protest 
for love and camaraderie. They will go gather with some people and break the law just to be with some people they feel care about them. They'll join a gang and risk their life every day just for camaraderie to feel love that was missing in their home. That's the currency of the home, a father giving love to his children. And that comes from time, that comes from care, that just comes from effort, just being there. But a lot of us grew up without that. A lot of people are growing up without fathers in the home. A lot of people growing up with a strained relationship with their father. And that's playing real big into the end times because if you didn't grow up with the love of the father, it's hard for you to understand the love of God. Okay? So I'm going to try my best to explain some of it. God, the Bible says God is love. That's not all God is, though. That's just an aspect of God. He is love. He's much more than that, but that's the best way the scripture could kind of say that he is love and he loves us. He created us out of love. We're here because he loves us. Amen? And let me try to explain this to you. Hopefully you'll get it. I love this saying though, the difference between who you are and who you want to be is what you do. In God, listen, I talk about human beings and human doings all the time. When a child grows up without proper authority, or they may even have a father who's pushing them to do something, live vicariously through them so he could get credit for it, that child becomes a human doing, meaning that what he does is who he is, not being. Or when the father's not there, he may do something to try to prove to his father that I made it without you. He's still a human doing and not just content with be. Does that make sense? I've explained all of that, so hopefully I don't have to go into that too much. But this is why we need to be a human being that God created us to be, because in God, being and doing are one. So in God, being and doing is one. They are 100% consistent with one another in God. What he says he does, what he does he says, there is no shadow of changing, there is no Era, there is it's just strictly perfection and harmony. What God does and says, it's all one. That's what makes him God. If he says it, it happens when he says it. So there's no way it can't be because he said it and what he says is. So his doing and his being are one. That's what makes him mighty and great because being and doing are one. His words and actions are perfectly aligned and never conflict with one another. They can't. Because even if they conflict, he meant for it to conflict, so it's not a conflict. <laughs> he can't conflict if he is, is. Y'all, it's hard for me to use these human words to try to describe an almighty God. Okay, I'm trying my best. This is perfection and this is what true holiness or wholeness or true oneness really is. Whole, meaning well. True wellness is when being and doing are one. Y'all understand that? Okay, good. That's going to help you with the next part. He wants the same for us. Look at somebody say, he wants the same for you. Amen. Amen. Is everybody good? Yes. Okay. Okay. I got so used to outside, I needed somebody to bring a horn in here and blow it. <laughs> but he wants the same for us. Listen, he wants our words and deeds to be perfectly aligned to resemble him. So this is what he wants. He wants you to do what you say and stick with what you say. Amen. Then you're like him. He wants you to live what it is you're saying. He wants your words and your actions to be one. This is what holiness is. Folks try to make holiness 
a denomination. And they try to dress it and look like it. We know that didn't work. Many of y'all, amen, sinned in dresses and couldn't wear pants. I mean, no makeup, crust in the corner of your lips and you was still acting up. So we know holiness ain't no appearance. <laughs> hey, man, uh, some uh, old Kojic folk in here. You know. Amen. I mean, head jeans, folding them up so tight so you could get them in a lunchbox <laughs> and put them on when you got to school. Hey, Amen. Holiness. No, that's not holiness. And some of the worst hate in church was the old church mothers who claimed to be the holiest of, of them all. And I mean, hated folks. You didn't know till they cooked for you. The food would be good so they could lure you to the house. Then they in there talking about everybody in the church, especially the pastor. You'd be wondering, why, like, why do you go to this church? <laughs> me, me and my wife used to do that. We'd be sitting, we'd be thinking, why are you here? Oh, yeah, Chassie, back in 1970, let me tell you what he did. If they did it, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, why are you here? I remember me and my wife was casting a demon out of a girl, and there she was possessed. And this demon, oh, Lord, it was bad. We were up in a room in a church, and casting this demon out, and was praying with her or whatever, and she just bust out laughing. All of a sudden, and I was like, okay, uh, you ain't laughing at me. I'm for real about mine. <laughs> we gonna cast you out. And it was just laughing and laughing. I was like, what you laughing at? The demon said, they're here. And I said, who? The prayer warriors. And then we heard an old lady, old mother, where's that demon? The demon was laughing. Came up there. We gonna cast you out. The demon just laughed. And so I, you know, okay, y'all, do your thing. I didn't want to do it no way. Y'all, there you go. So they start trying to tell her what pastor said. Pastor said, a Christian can't have no demon. Demon like, well, here I am. Okay. <laughs> pastor said, I'm just pastor said, demon like, pastor's words ain't, ain't about to make this demon move. And so the demon was just like, you can't, no, 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 no. You need some authority. We, you don't have none. So we let, them run, we let it run its course. I think it put more demons in it than we started with. And we ended up spending the whole night at their house. Oh, we saw all kinds of antics that night. We saw a dude freeze in the air, angels grabbing. Did we not see that baby she was raised? Saw a dude rise up off the ground and levitate. Angels flipped him over. Uh, that was a night. Yeah. Demons are real, y'all. And CERN has unleashed this end time hatred that you're seeing. It came straight from CERN. 2014, was it when I warned y'all of that? 2015? Yeah. So now they have the, the spirits they need and they can manipulate people, and now everything is fast-tracked. Look at somebody and say, but I'm on the winning side. <laughs> he wants the same for us. He wants our words and our deeds to be perfectly aligned to resemble him. Right? Every father in here, you get pleasure when your children do something that resembles you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When they do what you would have done, that kind of excites you, don't it? I would have done that. Feels pretty good, don't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's how God feels. When you are aligned and you do what he does. So when you resemble him, he wants our words and deeds to be perfectly aligned to resemble him. This is what holiness is. And should be the goal of every believer, especially in this last hour. 2 Corinthians uh, 7 and 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse 
ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, doing what? Perfecting wholeness, wellness. Perfecting holiness, wellness. One, your actions and your deeds. I mean, your actions and your words. Wholeness. Amen? It's not a denomination. It's a behavior. This cannot be achieved overnight. Amen? Some folks, you're still working on it. Because it requires maturing in Christ and learning the ways of holiness. That's why we have church. We have church so you can learn. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. You can hear the word. You can get fellowship. You get strengthened. You get admonished. So it can't happen overnight. It starts with, but it, here's the start of it, a born again experience. If you don't remember your born again experience, you're not born again. You should remember when everything changed. Unless everything didn't change. You should remember becoming a new creation and old things being passed away and behold, all things become new. Unless old things didn't get passed away and old th all things didn't become new. I'm not talking about the date on a Monday. I got rid of my heavy load. I don't know what day it was. But I do know something happened and it made me not want to be who I used to be. I made the decision to not be that person anymore. Then I remember, because I'd made that decision, and some time had passed, I'm praying one day, all of a sudden, fire shoots through my veins. I remember this. I was laying on, my, on a couch back in my old house. Laying on the couch, fire shot through my veins. Just fire, like electricity. All this brightness, electricity, everything. And I was like, it's like somebody plugged me in the wall. And I was like, what is this? Like, what is this? And it was the Holy Ghost. It was power, like electrical power. Like electricity power. And it just sh shocked me. Yeah. Yeah. And then I remember when it was time for me to go and speak, especially when it was a place where there was like a great principality over the area, whatever, whatever. I'd be either in my hotel room, I'd be on the plane, whatever. And that's, some of that same power would begin to shoot through me again. And what God was doing, he was filling me up with something for the message that I had to preach. Yeah, it ain't never been about human strength. Look how little I am. I'm a little bitty something. It ain't never been about me. You got to have the power of God for that. Right? And so the power would, power of Holy Ghost would prepare and that's because I wanted it, but I needed it too. But it would never work if I had things in my life that didn't belong. It would never work. So if I was in the wrong place, wrong time, doing the wrong thing, you ain't getting filled with nothing. This sounds like an old school, old message. Yeah. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about church folk. Whenever you say what I just said, they automatically think of the big stuff. Right? Oh, sexual sin, fornication, uh, murder, uh, you, done, you know, stole, stealing, you, you, you're out doing something. No, 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 no. That ain't what I'm talking about. Envy, jealousy, malice, maliciously getting back at somebody. Hatred, slander. Those are the ones that the spirit won't entertain. I know I'm preaching. See, when the folk want to come in church and dance over all that stuff. Brother, get them testify. Y'all, I, 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 I slept with 30 prostitutes. 
but God has delivered me. Everybody, hey! And folks sitting in the audience, hatred, jealousy. They get up, y'all, I was jealous of so-and-so, but, you know, I, Lord, forgive me. I'm, I'm, I'm good now. All right, well, bless you, brother. That ain't big enough for somebody to go get on the organ. <laughs> we can't use no electricity on that, brother. <laughs> we ain't gonna use the air conditions on that, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just be good. Do better next time. Do better next time. Oh, really? The first murder that ever took place in the whole history of the world was because somebody was envious. All of the witchcraft, all of the sorcery, all of the debauchery that is anti-God took place because somebody was prideful. Nimrod lifted himself up in pride and all witchcraft was born. Every enemy of God was unleashed. Isaiah 14 and 11, somebody lifted themselves up and tried to be equal to God. This cannot be achieved overnight, though. It requires maturing. But it starts with a born-again experience and then being filled with the Holy Ghost power of God. Amen. Amen. And this should be something you, you know, this is, oh. Now, this is my preference, okay? Churches do it how they want. They'll bring you up, tarry. They do things. They pray through. all those things. That, that, That's how churches do it. I get it. That's their way. But at ABC, what I like, I like people to seek this on their own without an audience. And the reason why is because, and that's just me, the Bible don't have a, uh, a method or a, yeah, they don't have a manual or, a, a, you know, an order that it has to take place or whatever. And the reason why is because it happened to me. When I was in church and we were praying and you know, they prayed to get filled with the Holy Ghost. It never worked for me. But when I got one-on-one, face-to-face with God, and God began to show me me, there was no noise, no me, show me, okay, you're too filthy, I can't do it. There's no room in there, I can't fit. And so I had to go through a period with just me and God, seeking him, trying to get the way I needed to be. So that there would be room for the spirit to come in. And I did that on my own because I wanted it. And I believe every one of you need to want it. Amen. People ask, what, what, how do, what do I do? What do I do? Seek him. Then you know how to do everything else you want to do. Everything else you want to do in life. Oh, but when it comes to the Holy Ghost, I need it. No, 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 no. Acts 19 and 2, he said unto them. So these are folks that got saved. He said, so have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? I know folks, but the Holy Ghost is a person. It is a person. Well, you don't say it. You don't say you. You, you, you got to say him. You're like, well, right here, it didn't say him. Have you been filled with the Holy Ghost power of God? So, have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? Can I say that? Okay. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Power of God. Same thing. But he asked them. They had been saved. But he said, hey, have you, have you been filled with the Holy Ghost power? Because, you know, and they, they were like, uh, we have not much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. We didn't know. And the Bible said they were all filled. Now, they didn't have Twitter and Facebook, <laughs> amen, TVs and movies. So they wasn't watching a bunch of junk they shouldn't have been watching and hearing a bunch of stuff they shouldn't have been hearing. Most of them wasn't dibbling and dabbling and something else happening. <laughs> wasn't that much going on back then. So it happened a lot quicker for these people than it happens for some of you. Because there's some things that need to be cleaned up. Sin causes us to miss the mark 
of holiness. Sin is an inconsistency that causes our new creation being and what we are doing to be in conflict. Does that make sense? So the wholeness of God, like I told you, the words and the actions got to be the same for it to be wholeness and wellness. But when sin is in our lives, sin stops us from being whole. We're in conflict. That's what the devil's looking for. It causes our being and doing to be in opposition of one another. This internal str struggle is inequality or iniquity. This is where the word comes from. So things are unequal. So you're not whole. Does that make sense? Okay. Leviticus 19 and 2. Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I the Lord your God am holy. This is not the way you dress. Although it will affect the way you dress. Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm going to get old. I'm going in old mother mode now. Yeah. So it's not the way you dress, but it is the way you dress. Uh, uh, the Bible says, be ye holy, for I, the Lord, am holy. So you don't be as holy as the Lord. You can't be. But we are to be holy or whole or well with our words and our deeds matching. That's why the Bible tells you to hide the word in your heart so you won't sin against them. Because if you hide the word in your heart, it'll change your actions. Because the Bible says from the heart flows the issues of life. All your actions come from your heart. If you hide the word in there, it'll start aligning the actions with the word. When a man lives against his own words, he is miserable. This is the problem we're seeing. This is what they're looting about. This is why they're throwing bricks. This is why they want to kill. This is why they want blood. This is why people act that way because they're living against their words. What they promised they would never do anymore, they kept doing. What their father did to them that they hated and despised, they did it to their children. I would never do this to my kid. I'm going to be there for my child. Then they got older and let themselves down. Their words and their deeds didn't match. I know I'm preaching. Yeah. 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 I never talk about my husband like that. I never do that like mama did. I never talk about it. Got older. Words and deeds stopped matching. So now they're miserable. This causes God's good creation to live beneath his ordained plan for us. Romans 8 and 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall what? Live. God loved us so much. Look at somebody and say, God loves you. He loves us so much, he gave his son to die for our iniquities, things that were unequal in us. All of that inequality, unequal, all of the stuff that don't match. He loved us so much that his son died. And to save us from struggling to align our words and deeds. In other words, dying to send the spirit back to help us align with what we say. This act of redemption doesn't just save us from hell, but it gives us an abundant life, a better life today. A better life today. So you see the foolishness going on in the news and you see that, you see the, on TV, you see what happened and I mean your reaction now Versus before you got saved, it's totally different. There was a time when you would have fought it to everybody and you would have started, a, your whole page would have been hate the white man. But now you're taking a step back and saying, okay, Lord, let's check me out first. Let's make sure I'm good. I am preaching. So it's 
that's going to give us abundant life, a better life today, John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to what? Kill. kill. And then to what? Destroy. That's what he wants to do. Steal. Kill. Destroy. He said, but I am come that they might have life and that they might have it what? More abundant. More abundant. Now. Right now. He wants your life to be better right now. I understand those that suffer. There are people all over suffering. But right now, God has made a way for us to have a better life right now. Overcoming issues. See, the suffering needs to be suffering not as an evildoer. We're all going to suffer persecution for the kingdom. But we don't suffer as an evildoer. Amen. Listen, y'all. Now, this is what the Lord spoke to me. I wrote all this down in my journal. Ah, I felt it when he was telling me. Mm. Listen. God loves what he made. Okay? He loves what he made. Some of y'all painted pictures when the women did the paint thing. Y'all did the paint, what, what was it called? Paint by numbers? What y'all do? Paints? Paint and silk? Whatever. We got a room in our house and my wife got all her paintings up. She loved them paintings. Amen. She had fun, but what you created, you, you proud of it. Some of y'all got sculptures you did with clay. It don't look nothing like what you said. You got to put a sign in front of it. Yes, it is an elephant. And brother, that looked like a bulldog. It's an elephant. But you're proud of it. You're proud of what you made. Amen? You're looking at your baby. Looking down at your baby and the baby looking like you. Makes you proud. Amen? Amen? I'm a, my, my sons, they, they get, I, I creep them out because they'll catch me just staring. <laughs> I stare at Landon especially when I was lifting weights you couldn't tell us apart sometimes like behind us I mean I, before he got hook eyes. but for a while like people would really our mannerisms and the way we talked and different things it, it was so much like me and that would just and so he'd be like Ugh! at the house Ugh! and I'd just be <laughs> Me and Jonathan riding yesterday. We just had just been fishing, and y'all, Jonathan, Jonathan be catching fish like he's Saint Peter. <laughs> I don't know how. I mean, Mike, what does he do, Mike? Every time, I mean, we set up. Me and Mike got there just setting up. And while we set jars up, I got one. <laughs> so. But I, we were riding in the, we were riding yesterday, and I was just looking at him. And he looking at me, you know, because he know I get that look. He's just looking like me. <laughs> Sitting there thinking like me. And that just makes me feel, yes. can't you describe it? Yeah. So I can only imagine <laughs> how God feels. Yeah. See, because all I know is what I see from these boys and what they've done or been around. Or, you know, and I love all of it. God can see inside. He knows exactly what you meant. Think about that. He knows he don't ever get it wrong. He knows exactly how it made you feel without you saying anything. He knows your hair count, your cell count. We call ourselves loving each other. I love this woman. God knows I do. And she knows a lot about me. I know a lot about her. But I don't know what she's thinking sometimes. 
You don't know what I'm thinking sometimes. God takes it to another level. He knows what you're thinking all of the time. There's not a thought that passes him. There's not an intention that confuses him. There's not an action that dumbfounds him. He knows all. So his love is different. When he says he loves you, what this generation needs. That kind of love. He loves what he made. God's work of creation was even done to musical accompaniment. What? What? So I'm about to create the most precious thing ever. Cue up the music. Y'all start singing and shouting because I'm making something better than anything I've made so far. So if he made us to music and joy and rejoicing and celebration, he wants our living to be as joyous as his initial creation process. Job 38 4 is where he says it. He was telling Job, where were you? Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understand. You don't know. You can't understand me. You can't complain to me. Where were you when I made all of this? When the morning stars did what? Sang together. And all the sons of God what? Shouted for joy. That was creation. Listen. God rejoices in what he made. TV, social media, movies, depictions, All of this got God hating us, hating the world, giving the world to the devil, kicking us to the curb. It's all corrupt. It's all a mess. And it ain't going to be good until it all ends. That's not what he made. That's not who you are. That's not what this is. The devil has a knack for making you miss all of the wonderful things by focusing on the little negative thing. All of the blessings he's bestowed upon you and you praying about a spoonful of foolishness. A whole life of overcoming obstacles, being delivered from all kinds of stuff. He delivered you from all kinds of stuff. When you thought that was it, you thought it couldn't get any worse, and he made a way for you to overcome it. But you focus on a little spoonful of foolishness of negativity, what the world says, what the elite say, what the Illuminati says. I think I want to hear what God says. He made it. He made you. And he said, it is good what I have made. So he, God rejoices in what he made. He rejoices in our rejoicing. He celebrates with our celebrations. He is blessed by our blessings. Just as we now suffer for him for righteousness sake, 
he already suffered for us. 1 Peter 4 and 13, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with what? God wants to go through life with us. Look at somebody say he wants to be with you. He wants to go through life with us and be our lamp and light. He wants his spirit to fill us. And to guide us in his ways. He wants his word to be in us. Now listen, if he wants his word to be in us, he wants his spirit to fill us. He wants us to go through life. Do you think he wants us depressed? Should a Christian fill with the spirit? Well, let me stop. How can a Christian Feel with the spirit, be depressed. The second fruit, before you get to the rest of it, my voice keeps cracking. I don't know what that is. That must mean I meant it. The second fruit is joy. That's the opposite of depression. is the opposite of anxiety. What is a Christian doing with anxiety and depression? There must be a lack of spirit there. So if God wants to go through life with us, and he wants his spirit to fill us and guide us, and he wants his word to be in us, so instead of sinning against him, we can live blessed and favored with him. So living blessed and favored with him says that, what am I depressed about? What can depress me if my creator is for me? Oh, but look at the world. The world's going to end. No, I'm going to look at the one who made the world, and I'm going to look at the beginning and the end. Who knows all things and elected to put me here at such a time as this. Why? So I can have joy watching the rest of this thing play out. Look at somebody and say, the devil's not going to stop my joy. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. And because they didn't give it to me, Jeff, guess what? They can't take it away. The Bible even calls it joy un. That means you can't even express it because it's so full of glory. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace, what? That don't sound like depression to me. Summary! Creation was not an accident. But it was a strategic plan to create a being that God could love. <laughs> that's all of it. Listen, that's all of it. Creation took place for one reason. To get you here. <laughs> you can call it a big bang if you want to. It probably was noisy. Because folk was singing and shouting, the Bible said. God stopped time. No, he didn't. Take that back. He created time. <laughs> there was no time. He created time and said, okay, I need seven days. And seven days happened. I need the sun and the moon to show us what the days are. 
then I need ground, I need earth, I need water. I need all of these things because I'm building a very complex cellular structure that's going to rely on the sustenance of this place. The angels, I mean, what you doing? What, what you making? I mean, you know, what you make? I, y'all ain't got time for y'all. I'm making a being that's going to choose to love me. I'm going to love him so much that I'm going to let him choose. Uh Uh-oh, the Calvin is up. What? Yes! I'm going to love him enough to let him choose me. And those that don't choose me, they're going to make a mess of things. You think he didn't know? They're going to make a mess of things. So, third, the the third one, you know, there's, I mean, the second one. Yeah, it's the second one, the second one. The son. So, I'm sorry, but eventually you're going to have to go down there. Because I'm so far removed from them that they're not going to really hear me. So, I, you have to take what we are and go down there and be what they are. So that you can relay the message and let them know how much I love them. Oh my God. This is all about, look at somebody say, it's all about love. Man, we sing these songs and stuff, and we just have no idea how much God loves us. This is why he's so upset when we fall in love with this world. Because earth is a byproduct. That's not the intent. Oh, but 2020 has made us all fall out of love with the world. All of us believers. Amen. Didn't we, did our prayers change? <laughs> what we thought we wanted? <laughs> That's all right, Lord. You just go on and come and get us. I'd rather see you right now. Mm. Oh, I feel the power of God in this place. Earth is a byproduct, so there could be a dwelling place for God's beloved creation. He created earth, so we could have something to subdue and rule. It's just a byproduct. Earth ain't it. He's going to destroy earth and create a new one. He's not going to destroy man and create a new one. He's going to keep us. You know why? Because he loves us. <laughs> How many of you keep what you love? Amen. Until your wife throw it away. <laughs> what you do with it? I threw that away. I told you. I'm the only one that's happened to? Oh, okay. My wife said, preach the word, Pastor. Stick with the word. You was doing good. You almost made me cry. Now you're just a, <laughs> a play. Yeah, but he created earth so we could have something to subdue and rule. A place where God can experience life, listen, through us. What? So he was experiencing life as a being. Jesus. Jesus died. Rose, resurrected, ascended, sent his spirit back to get in us so he can continue to live life through us. Yes. That's love. He said, look, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I must go away. But when I leave, I'm going to pray of the Father and sin number three. This way, he can live in you and through you. And the works you saw me do, now you can do. Man, 
this is so good to me. Amen. The very reason the devil wants us all dead. How many of you know he wants you dead? He hates you. That's why you can't team up with him. Because he'll get you out there and then he'll drop you. But the very reason the devil wants us all dead is because God loves us more than him. That's what Cain and Abel represent. Yeah. Yeah. He took the time to make you, played music at your making, celebrated you, gave you a place, all of these wonderful things. And the devil sat there and watched as Lucifer thinking he was Bob. Nah, I made something better than you. I'll never dwell in you, but I'm going to dwell in man. So the very reason there is malice and evil in our world today is because the enemy wants to destroy what God loves the most. God created us in love. Chose us with love and saved us through love. He is coming back to rescue us out of this world because, for only one reason, because of what? His love for us. Even when we did not know him, he loved us. Even when we knew him and still acted a fool and fell away from him. He yet what? Loved us. He has more love for us than we have sin. Don't you ever think that there's not enough love to cover your sin. He has more love than anything you've ever done. Remember, men put him on the cross, nails in his hands and feet, thorns in his head, scourged him, pierced him in his side, Dis tried to literally destroy his entire being. And he said, Father, forgive them. Even when we knew him and still fell away from him, he yet loved us. He has more love for us than we have sin. He has more love for us than we have error. God has already proven how much he loved us through the cross. So it's not even up for discussion at this point. Stop looking at what you did and who you were. With God in you, you have not only overcome your past, but you are a new person in his eyes. And that's the only eyes that count. Those are the only eyes that count. You're a new somebody say you're a new person in his eyes those are the only eyes that matter he does not even remember he doesn't remember the bible says it's the devil that accuses the brother day and night god is not the devil he doesn't remember that's why the devil got to keep bringing it up Remember, Lord? Nope, I don't remember that. <laughs> you don't remember, Lord, when he... Nope, I don't remember that. What you talking about? He doesn't even remember. He only wants to guide your present into your future so he, listen, so he can be known by others through you. He loves his creation, the good, the bad, and the ugly. He loves his creation. He wants to enjoy life through us. He loves his creation. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I had to say that again because I felt a witch in here. He loves his creation. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Even the old ugly witch in here. All you got to do is repent. Amen. 
the good. The bad. Mm -hmm. And we all have good, we all have bad, and we all have ugly. Amen. 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 I remember Elijah, the greatest prophet. I told y'all the story, but I'll tell it again. Greatest prophet, prophet, one of the top three in the Bible. And I mean, Elijah just tore the whole world up in the name of the Lord. I mean, burned up, killed all the prophets of Baal, everything. Then took off running, scared of Jezebel the witch. The Bible said he went and tried to hide. He scared everything. And God said, okay, let me send him some food. Because I love him. Can't die out there. He's scared. He all out of order. But I love him. So let me feed him. Give him something to drink. Nourish him. Why? Because I love him. <laughs> he wants to enjoy life through us and with us. Sure, you hate sin. But when you seek to do his will, you become the object of his delight. 1 John 4 and 16. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth where? God. In God. And that's not even the best part. And God, what? In him. That's why the devil wants hate. That's why everything is about hate now. Because he wants to do away with, he don't want you to know. He really does not want you to know how much God loves you. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, <laughs> so are we in this world. So as he is whole, and his word, and his actions are completely alive, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love does what? What you scared of? You serve the creator. You serve the creator of the creation of all things, then you know in the end, we win. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him. Because what? He first loved us. Everyone stand to your feet. Man, that was a good old post COVID message. Post pandemic or post shelter, whatever. Whatever we just went through. My goodness. This is the answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. Me. Andre Crouch would literally just sit at the piano and just, I don't know how he did that. I pray he saw Jesus when he left here. But my goodness. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. The only way we're going to get through this is with the way. Jesus. Everyone bow your heads. I need the power. God. Pastor, you talked about electricity. You talked about jolts and shocks. You talk about witches and demons. And I need to be ready for all of that. And I need that feeling. It. I need that indwelling. I need to be filled like that. If that's you, I need you to just come up here. tell y'all all the time this 
lackadaisical living off somebody else's words and actions and spirits and different y'all it's played out you gotta leave you're not gonna you, you can't stay here like that you're not gonna make it not gonna live through me words ex ministries fame g craig lewis videos it's just not gonna work god is getting rid of all of that because it's not about any of that it's not about that for me so it definitely can't be about that for you. We are in the end times. Yes, end time demons are worse than the rest. They're worse than anything you've ever seen. Hell has been unleashed. They've gone into the abyss, into darkness, and they told you that they pulled darkness out and brought it into our realm. They told you what they did. I dealt with demons years ago. Nothing like what's going on now. Nothing. And they're all on social media. That's why you're in your house glued to it. Because the, the powers that be want, want you deceived by it. And they want to be able to push a button and everybody jumps. Release the button and everyone calms back down. That's the co kind of control that they're after. And they want you to make a decision based on something else other than the power of the Holy Ghost. And that's just what time it is. I can't make excuses. It's, yes, they're real. Demons are real. The devil is real. So you better be prepared. And the Holy Ghost can handle it. <laughs> Holy Ghost can handle it. Yeah. See, the devil is the devil, but there are angels that can whip it. The Bible tells us that Michael got his number and gonna hurt, can hurl him to the earth. <laughs> yeah. Father God, in the name that is above every name, we give you glory and honor. We thank you, Lord, for this gathering. I especially, Lord, thank you for this group. God, when I traveled by myself, I was so lonely. Got so hard sometimes. But I knew people didn't know my wife, they didn't know my family, so I just felt like anything that the devil threw at me, I could take and protect my family. But Father God, now is church family. And I can't protect them. You have to. And as the enemy lashes out at me, he's hitting them. But I know one thing. I know the power of the Holy Ghost. God, I've seen you do things that I can, can't even express. I've seen you shift atmospheres. God, I've seen you split pulpits in half. I've seen your power, God, make people levitate. And I've just seen how powerful you are. Just as they reached out to grab your son and the Bible said he just vanished. And they were reaching that air. Says you made Philip just disappear and reappear somewhere else. Just as you transfigured God, your power is greater. Your power is awesome. And that self-same power is what we have to have right now. So God, I pray right now that not only will everyone under the sound of my voice have a born again experience, 
a definitive, actual, factual, born again experience. Not only will they have it, but I pray that the fire of your Holy Ghost would feel, seal, and secure your adamant believers. Those, Father God, that will forsake the world, those that will forsake reputation and make of themselves no reputation, those that will forsake fame, those that will forsake man's glory, vain glory, vain imaginations, those that will forsake all of the trappings of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride, those that will forsake the world, fill them with your Holy Ghost. That it will be noticeable, concrete, and effective as they stand in this last hour. So as they seek you, Lord, even from this place, as you heal the lepers, as they walked away, and they were a distance from you, and the Bible said they began to be made whole, to the point to one came all the way back. Feel your people the same way. Take them through a process of sanctification, dying to the world dying to the flesh, dying to themselves. Clean their hearts and fill them. In Jesus' name, it will be done. And as you feel them, Lord, things, Father God, will begin to unlock. Things that have been locked up. I see babies coming through wombs that have been locked up by witchcraft. Father God, I see better jobs and better finances. Father God, I see better relationships, reconciliation with mothers and fathers where the devil had locked it up through witchcraft for many years. God, I see you working miraculously in the lives of those that you feel just to show how much you love us. We thank you for your love. We thank you for loving us no matter what. We thank you, Father God, for caring when no one cared, for being there when no one else was there. Thank you for your love, God. And let your love continue. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.